many times as I do cusk videos and post pictures of cusk, people keep asking me what is a cusk. And the first thing I'll say is probably the best eaten fish swimming in fresh water. And it's basically nothing other than a freshwater cod. It's a ling cod is what it actually is. And uh, it's got all kinds of different names, like um, we call them cusk around here, around here being the northeast. The, um, out in the Great Lakes they call lawyer fish. In Europe and Canada they call burbot. Uh, some of the old timers around here used to call them eel pout because they thought that it was a, a lot of people thought it was a combination of a bullhead, a horn pout, and, a, um, and an eel. But it's nothing more than a freshwater cod, is all it is. Um, and they're basically a cold water fish that only really has any activity in the cold water, hence when there's, you know, ice on the lakes is when you actually catch them. They get pretty big, um, you know, I've caught eight pounders, ten pounders years ago. Haven't caught anything big in the last few years, but every once in a while they do catch some good ones. But, um, you know, basically you, now, in the state of New Hampshire, you can run six cusk lines, and you only have to check them every 24 hours. Uh, some states are different, like in Maine, you have to check them once an hour, whatever. It, we're fishing in New Hampshire, so these laws pertain to New Hampshire. But essentially, to catch one, all you need is a cusk trap, which is nothing more than a stick with your name and address on it, some uh, line, squid line, whatever, nice one ounce weight with no more than six inches of leader from the weight to the hook. This weight has to be touching the bottom of the lake. It has to be on bottom, period, no exceptions. Um, and then all you do is you take a big fat shiner. It can be alive, you can use live bait. And you hook it through the back. I like to be right under the dorsal fin. Like so. And you drop it down. Until it hits bottom. slack but again remember now this has to be touching the bottom now if you catch a cusk on a tip up that's fine or even jigging which happens occasionally but if you're setting fixed lines and walking away from them they have that the weight has to be on the bottom the other thing is you can't use stainless steel hooks the reason being if the fish breaks off gets away if you cut the line and let the fish go that stainless steel hook won't dissolve it's eventually going to kill the cusk or kill the fish the other, you know, the regular hooks will dissolve and disappear. The fish will live on to bite another day and hopefully get bigger so you can take them home. Um, but in any case, uh, if you do release a fish, cut the line with a cusk because they generally swallow, they swallow that hook so far. If you try to get the hook out, you're going to kill it. If you're going to release it, cut the line, let it go. It won't kill the fish. Um, if you catch anything other than a cusk on this device, you cannot keep it. Perch, lake trout, anything. You gotta let it go. Legally, you cannot keep anything other than a cusk on this device. And then, always mark your traps with some fashion. A lot of the old timers used to put hemlock boughs over the holes, cover it with snow, and keep the holes from freezing. That works pretty slick. I like these red posts because I can see them, but you need to mark it because if we get, first of all, you don't want snow machines running over your traps. Second of all, you got to be able to find it if you have a snowstorm. So I like to be up at least a couple feet off the ground or the ice. Then um, come back in 24 hours and check your traps. This is a very fun, productive way to catch fish. I like it because you can set your traps, come go to work, work your eight hours, whatever you do, come back out the next day, check your traps, and you go home with fish nine most of the time. And you know, on that, 
if you're a hunter-gatherer, forager, whatever you want to call it, trapping and this type of uh, fishing will always outproduce hunting because it's passive. Um, you come back, you do it once a day, you check your trap lines, you check your cusk lines, and you end up yielding a lot of food from it. And it's passive in the sense you're not, it's not constant overland travel, you're not out on the lake jigging all day. You know, you set your lines, you go do your, go do your business, come back and pull, pull the food through the ice. So it's a pretty good way to harvest food. Um, and these cusks are absolutely delicious. If you look on my YouTube channel, I have some cusk fishing videos. I have some good recipes for cusk chowders and stuff and different ways to cook it. But anyway, I hope that answers any questions. Please feel free to chime in with any tips or advice, with the exception. Like if you're going to say, oh, you know, throw the Jiffy Ice Auger on the dump, buy an Eskimo, those things, I, that's not productive. We, I could care less what you have for an Ice Auger or whatever. If you know tricks and tips about cusk fishing, please feel free to chime in. Always, always good to learn from other people. So that's the whole point of doing this stuff. In any case, speaking of work, I gotta get, I gotta get back to it. So. Happy customers.